Uh, I'm so full of energy, I'm just gonna get in there and I'm gonna fabricate some stuff and we're gonna make one of these. <laughs> Perfect, okay. Right. Yeah, perfect. Alright mate, I'll speak to you later on. Cheers dude. <coughs> bye bye. Just let me just let me put my jewellery on. Hi, and welcome to Dirty Shed Creations with me, Al Watson, and him, Mark Knight. <laughs> That's a keeper. <laughs> I always like to lock out the world when I'm in the dirty shed. So should you. Uh, I'll tell you what, Sparky414, mm -hmm. he has come up with the greatest idea. Something that kept piling up in the workshop at home was, and I'll show you, if, um, I'll just have to open this trunk. Talk about a fantastic idea. We obviously use those uh, map gas, um, piezoelectric kind of plumber's torches or these things. Okay guys, do not try this at home. These are dangerous. But if you're stupid enough to mess around with them, you could make useful stuff out of them. And what he does is he cuts them off here. He leaves a tab on up here that goes right around the corner actually. Fold the tab over and then suddenly like cut across here as well. So you've got this, you've basically got something that you can kind of just hang and store tools. Or, I mean, he uses it for a beer or some WD-40. What a fantastic idea. I've never wanted to throw these out because I knew there was something to do with them. And the problem is, is I'm not that imaginative, really. And he just knocked it out of the park with his one of his second, his latest film, actually. So go and have a check of that. Sparky415. Cheers, Sparky. Everything's adjustable. Everything's adjustable, yeah. He, always there commenting. And I just, honestly, I was like, Nell Sparky. That is a brilliant idea. So we're gonna, I said to him, well, you'll see some of those. I think we're gonna have to put a little acknowledgement, a little acknowledgement uh, and getting the jewelry. Jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. This is, is uh, are we allowed to do that? What do you mean? Jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. Oh, not anymore, no. Mm. Um, what else? We've, we've also got, and I think we're going to get into this straight away now, so I don't know how Mark's going to edit this, and I've probably just made it really difficult for him, but I'm so full of energy, I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to fabricate some stuff and we're going to make one of these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling it uh, a key press. So it's got some, we'll be making these penny washers, <laughs> really? I don't know if they're really a penny. They're more like one. They're more like a 50p with all the bloody uh, what's it on them. But uh, tiny little trace hooks, copper riveted, um, essentially made to sit on a wall. There you go. Mark can flip around. So this is what we're making today. Yeah, I like to use it for just hanging my jewellery on. You know, there because I'm I'm into jewellery now since watching the Tiger King. <laughs> Uh, no, we're in the new workshop, uh, which has been functioning. Let's call it a garage. We're going to call it a garage for planning purposes. So we're in the new garage. We're going to get into a maker film. We are going to do that. We're going to cut all this chitter chatter that I'm doing out. I think before we do that, we'll just, just do a quick tour of the workshop and where we stand at the moment, where we are. It is a mess. It's already dirty, which of course it's bound to be, but the problem is we're still doing some of the structural stuff and this, you know, it's like these things down here, you know, um, we've got all the fascias to go on, which I've never bought those in advance because they've just sat here getting trashed for six months now. Start at the front door and show, yeah. show us all its features. Well, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit and labour it. Basically at the moment, this, this is obviously going to be two bifold doors, you know. Um, we've got to cast a slab out the front so that vehicles can actually get in here because I do intend to park in here. Um, and, you know, mountain bikes, scaffolding tower, you know, shit for jobs that's going to happen soon, stock of steel, drain pipes, sack barrow, um, 
grinder that we redid the um, we redid the bearings on. We've got our old cast iron wheel, so we'll be returning to a couple of projects we've mentioned and haven't had a chance to do. Um, essentially, what we've got here is 10 meters by 4.2 meters, so 42 meters of floor space. The idea was to build a to build a kind of uh, a level up here for storage, and that's probably going to happen. But at the moment, I am, and I'm sure we all are. We're all skint, aren't we? Which is why. This is sat. I've got all the time in the world, but no money to buy, you know, uh, materials. So we're having to rely on what we've got in and, you know, make the most of it, really. So, yeah, the plan is this will be kind of hopefully a big table along here. It doesn't have to come too far out from the wall um, for joinery stuff. Switching over to this side here. We're going to make a better. This will probably be like, you know, metal work. So I, I dare say the grinder will end up, you know, coming in. We'll have a little welding table that we're going to kind of make, whether we do a maker's film on it. We probably will, because we'll be stuck for stuff for crap to show you guys. Yeah, so Forge will be here. Got our skylight. Um, Anvil's just here at the moment. I'm using this. It's a pain. I want my, I want my big, I want my big bloody thing back. Your big bit, yeah, the big vice. I want the big leg vice back. I'm using this at the moment. It's brilliant, but unfortunately, um, this is here. I'm just using it at the moment to stand the stand the forge on, um, and then kind of like the forge tends to vent straight up there, so it does get hot in here when we're using it. But we have to be considerate of noise at the moment, considering most people are home, of course, because a lot of people aren't back to work yet. So. Uh, yeah, we've we've shown you the old, we've shown you the old Myford. Because I've got this time, I've been kind of getting into things like this. It's really quiet to run, you know. This is it running. You know, it's very quiet. So I mean, I've got things like chucks. We've got a load of collets in there. We've got these kind of you know things to start making this work for us. I've been doing some tool grinding, um, but currently, again. This isn't where I want it. That shouldn't do that. So that needs kind of stripping down, cleaning and tightening. I think I had an issue with the tension on the belt. So we need it. I'm going to get a new belt. And also, yeah, an issue with the back gear. Not going to bore you with the details yet, but we might even do that as a film. Just doing a little refurb on these. There's a few out there already, but maybe a dirty shed take on it. Um, so a rambly, wittering, long-winded affair yeah with a fat man telling you what to do <laughs> yeah uh it came from a watchmaker this who kind of pretty much said you know it's a really good lay that you probably just want to look at the setup and that was i don't know eight years ago <laughs> so it sat there for eight years slowly rotting in a <laughs> shitty shed now at least it's in here and it can be safe i'd like wherever this goes you know all you know a shelf here with all the tools on it all the chucks all the stuff so we can get this working for us and start kind of adding little elements to our projects, which I can't wait to do really. Um, and then we're into kind of like, you know, mortising machines here that you guys have never seen, but you know, I very rarely use it. I've got a massive selection of kind of mortising bits, but this makes a funny sound when it runs. And I think it's because it's running the mortise cutter off central. So it's got a bit of a squeak to it. I'm completely in the dark mortising. Uh, just kind of, well, here you go, There's, that's a mortised hole, so it's cutting square holes and stuff. But obviously it's not, you don't just punch a thing, it's silly little hole. <gasps> you know, you might mortise out a big trench. <gasps> Excuse me. Tell me an application for it. What, what, well, you could, you could cut a lock in, for example. Okay. Mortise and tenon joints. So, mortising machine does all the work for you. Most of the schedule here will know what a mortising machine is. Yeah. So. Just not the person who's editing it. No, no. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what you make of it. Um, it's got this handle, you see. You'll probably quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like a fruit machine. Oh, so it's like I, a I fruit machine. Now. Yeah. <laughs> it's very dark at this end of the room. Watson. Ah, well. <coughs> oh, allow, no. No. Allow, allow me to put the lights on. <laughs> Sweet. Orange Moody. glow. Yeah. Moody. Um, ah, now this is something we're going to start. When I go to car boots and I can't wait for them to start up again, I think they have actually because Sparky K 
God, this is a video about Sparky, isn't it? Um, Sparky said that he went to one recently, got some nice finds as well, actually. So, and obviously everyone has been just organizing and going through everything. So there's gonna be some right finds, I think. Um, but yeah, whenever I come across little badges and stuff, I always tend to, well, I've just started sticking them onto here. So I that look quite cool, maybe build up on that. So metalworking coming round. Took this to pieces probably second week of lockdown and then for about, oh, I think it was about 20 quid managed to find new bearings for the quill. So we've replaced all those bearings. Absolutely nightmare with the spring in there. Took us like three hours to get the spring back in. Um, but uh, it's in and it's working. I mean, just listen to it. I'll turn it on and I love them when they start and they go, Whee! Maybe still need to do a bit of work on that, but the quill, it's just running so true. So, yeah. Yeah, there's someone at the door. I don't know. Could just be the wind. Jen's hoovering out a car, but she's brought sausages and pork chops. <laughs> Today was a good day. Yeah. It's been it's been glorious going through lockdown with, uh, with Jen. <laughs> she really understands me. <laughs> pork chops and sausages. There you go, Jen. Do you need anything else? Um, got a bucket? Yeah. You, couldn't, you couldn't do mine, could you? So we've got a maker's film for you now. Um, and I think, I'm gonna say this because when I originally made that, and I'm no blacksmith, we all know that, I'm not, but I just enjoy it, you know, well, I enjoy it so much. And tough at the moment because banging on heavy bits of metal, lots of people at home. Anyway, we're gonna just try and do something, but it's an example of perseverance sometimes pays off because you should have seen that when I was making it. It was a piece of shit for about two hours until it finally just all came together very quickly. And you know, it's a case of, I think about four or five times during doing this technique, which I've never done before, I was just ready to chuck it in the bin and go, that is a piece of shit. It's an absolute failure, chuck it away. And actually, it's kind of worked. You know, you're not gonna get kind of pristine blacksmithing from me, but you know, the, the look we've gone for and what this kind of key press. I know things that hold keys. I was always like, you know, in the workshops I've worked on, you go and get the key out of the key press. What the f is a key press? Well, it's a something to hold keys. I think generally they're locked, so maybe this isn't a key press as much as just a key hanger or a jewelry hanger for me. Let's face it, every man needs his jewellery. <laughs> Rapper bling. Oh, it's such shit. They're off wish.com. I think this will probably end up in here, but you know, who knows? It might even end up kind of being, you know, whatever. Are you gonna make another one then? I'm gonna make another one, but we're gonna make it slightly bigger. Oh. So, to that effect, um, Are I've you in this. a generous mood today? I'm not giving it away. No. <laughs> it's too much work in it, mate, at this point. But you know, you never know, mate. We'll maybe yeah. make another one. So what have we got here? We've got a bit of 25 by 25 by three. Um, what I did was very, Daniel Moss, thank you very much for this idea, but I think it's a general, it's maybe not his idea strictly, but it's how he works and I quite like it as a technique. Uh, a couple of punch marks or a couple of center marks and that will essentially give us the material to form the penny on the end. Uh, so we've got one of those. And then I've marked the middle because we'd like a really, as we've got on this, this slight taper to full width, or maybe not quite full width. So so that just gives us a point where we kind of taper this way and we taper that way and, and vice versa. So we, we can find those points on the hot metal. Let's get that in the forgerino. Um, and we've also got this. This is just a little bit of 10 mil, I think. 10 mil mild. Oh, it's not. So we've got a bit of eight mil round here. Um, what I've done is just marked off, I think, 80 mil sections. One, two, three, four, five. I was like an odd number. I think that'll look well spread over that distance. So we've got five little trace hooks to make. I fathomed out where I went wrong and why I went wrong on this. And one of the main points was that I tried to do it by eye. So I didn't have those marks on the bar to kind of isolate material properly. Um, and also I was doing something else wrong. So what I did yesterday, I came into the workshop and I spent, uh, re-handled my favorite hammer and I spent kind of two or three hours polishing all my hammers. So hopefully 
our finish is going to look neater than this. Okay. There we go. Get those off eBay. The guy who makes them, he's called something, he's got a silly name like Fish, Chips and Peas. But shit, does he make a good pair of songs. Ones all my favourite songs are his. One, two. That's an eBay 15 quid. It's quite nice actually for kind of nice back here. And I am going to show you my first pair of songs that I made. I mean, they're awful, but you know what? They actually work. They actually do work. And it, it, we will we'll do a me making some tongs at some point. Um, I've always shied away from it because of the drawing out process, but I think I'm getting there. So, yeah. So I think the first point to isolate the material for that penny is going to involve finding our mark an inch in from the end that I showed you before. Mark might just flash back to that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that over a sharp edge on the anvil, on its side, something like that. Stop talking and do it out. So we've got that, so where's our mark? So we're going to come, there's our mark, lift it up and bang. There we go, and then we'll flip it over, find our other mark. Bang. And I think, and we'll just flatten that out, that is going to be enough at this point. What I found when I did this is do one half of this first and then do the other half. It seemed to work for me. So I think we'll make one penny on the one side and then when we make the penny on the other we've got something to match it to. Find my little lump, half on, half off, give it a whack, give it another whack. There we go, and same again here. There we go, give that a flat. As you can see, I've made a bit of a mess of that, but look, this is what I'm trying to point out. Persevere, because that'll come right. That's this side. So give that a whack of tongue. making all the mistakes in the world here. Ooh. You know, I am trying to make a point here, though, like I said, that stick with stuff. So, so what we do here is... So it's coming, coming in a bit. We're still, you know, maybe I think we can be allowed a little bit of filing. Not that I'm saying that's where we want it at all, it isn't. And I mean, something we did with these, and you'll probably have seen it before where we've made a trace hook, is we did actually punch these out. And we're not gonna do that on the one we make because it, I punched too big a hole for the copper rivets. The copper rivets have a shank on them that's seven mil. And these would probably be 10 or 12 mil because I used a half inch drift to widen them out and it was too much. I mean, none of these move, they're all nice and held in there, but it would be nicer if those were tighter. They need a seven mil drilled hole. So they're gonna get kind of flatted out and then drilled. And I think that'll work a lot better. We're just gonna kind of draw that taper out a little bit more now. I mean that, you know, again, look, it's awful. It's absolutely horrific, but I think I'm just gonna put some texture on that to the halfway line and then we're gonna leave it. And then we're gonna flip it around and form the other end. And then we'll do a little bit of this way in, that way in to balance it out, to get it to work. I feel that there's a real maturity to our films now, Mark. <laughs> maturity? Yeah, oh, they're okay. old. They're old, Matt. <laughs> <clears throat> Right in somewhere. So better 
you can still see we're not right. We're not balanced nicely. And I think that taper should just come a little bit further this way. But you see what I mean? Maybe, maybe that's kind of, maybe that highlights what I was trying to say about persevere. Because I bet there was, for me even then, there were like two or three spots where it was like, chuck it in the bin. I mean, someone like Daniel Moss, I bet he could do one of these in like 15 minutes and it would look immaculate. And I'm not detracting from Daniel Moss at all, you know, he's a professional blacksmith with years and years of training. I'm not. <coughs> so in, an, in a way, there has to be a, for me, it's trial and error. <laughs> Knocking it from side to bloody side. Getting better, aren't we? Again, we, we haven't got this taper coming in on this side particularly well. But I think we can deal with that later when we do a bit of forming. The, cert, the, um, the actual ball is getting a bit better, isn't it? So we're not really forging here. I think Dan will, will tell you we're planishing. So we're just putting a little bit of surface texture and kind of polishing, polishing the edge. See, we've persevered with that and it's starting to come together a bit, isn't it? I'm not gonna say there isn't gonna be any file work on this, but you know, with me, my blacksmithing gets shit before it gets good. <laughs> and then if I keep going, it gets shit again. <laughs> So you're trying to match now? So now we try and do the other end and match it in and try and get it the same, but you saw the process we went through. I think there is an element of patience and calm. Take your time. I think this is it. Find a nice spot. Bit better in it. <laughs> We've only drawn it out by 40 mil. It's here. We're just going to do a bit of thinning. Just noticing that if you look down that texture there that we created, I'll try and get it in the light for. I, look, we're missing a portion of texture there, aren't we? Oh, there's always a drop seed. I don't know if I've spoiled it there. Shit. Well, we've got to do it now. I'm gonna say that's okay. So what have we got there? 15 mil as near as damn it. 
what have we got there? Slightly less, 14. So if we go and do this, so what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a straight line from there to there and taking out that lump. Don't underestimate your, your good old trusty files because they, they cut metal. They really do. That's a better line there, isn't it? We just need to do this side now. Happy? Wow. Ish. I'll probably just very gently alleviate these corners again, um, just to put all those faults that we've just filed out back in. Uh, and then uh, we will get to the forming. <laughs> what I want is I just want a clear line across there so I'm not, when we put that on it's flat because we're just going to form it down and then it's all going to be goo. And it... <laughs> it's always, it's just... <laughs> It's notoriously difficult, isn't it? <laughs> slinging it around, you know, I may as well just throw it at the f***ing forge. Okay. Still that f***ing lump there, can you just see it? Yeah, it's here. Yeah. yeah. This is the problem you've got, you see. So we've knocked this out in that 40 minutes and now we're into this trying to get it perfect. But the whole point is it's not meant to be perfect, but you can, I can't help myself, it's the truth. That's the lump. So what I'm trying to do is see that the file's running in to that corner. There we go. That's much more like I want it. Yeah? That's much more like it. Messing about with red hot metal. Where's my halfway mark? <sighs> Shit, that's hot. <laughs> this is the problem. Lost all the heat. Problem is you just don't have enough hands. Tell you what though, that is hot on my handy pot. And then it's come off. Right, so let's just quickly. Ah, shh. That worked out pretty good. Mm, not really, mate. <sighs> Come I only, on, do, I only do this for you, the fans. Uh. The fan out there, that single fan. Did you see Simon from Croatia is going to be sending you some uh, steel from the septic tank of a, <laughs> a, a yacht that he works on? No way, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What a crazy man. He copied your butterfly. Oh, did it? Yeah, and put them in a coffee table. Oh, man. You know, it's nice to be emulated, isn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? Right, I'm pissed off now, mate. I'm really <laughs> pissed off. Mainly with you. <laughs> I think, is there any chance? Don't sully this on our first adventure <gasps> in the shed oh, with needs. anger. I know. Look at the anger. <laughs> it's the life you chose, Watson, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know. I could be doing this or working in McDonald's with my free burgers a day. Free burgers a day? Oh, look, I just can't. Okay, oh, f <laughs> Just, you know. I like to think that people aren't really watching a maker film. They're just spending time with their Uncle Al as he gets angry over metal. There we go. Oh, here it comes. You know, how many f***ing clicks now on this? F***ing hell. Just so I could turn that f***ing times, but I've got that in that f***ing hand, this in this hand. Right, this is going to work. You see, I'm trying to f***ing tighten that onto there. It's 
tighten. Of course, it's red hot and it won't f***ing tighten now. Maybe we're there. We're not. Now, of course, I don't have my hammer. That's over there. Look at that. Well, couldn't you call forge it? Uh, it wouldn't work as well. I think we're all right at that. So there we go. So that was to form that loop, which actually, to be fair, has come out pretty well, but talk about annoying. I've got to be honest, I'm going to have to have a break after this, maybe get a cup of tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're coming all fired up. So we've just put our first bend in there Ooh. so obviously the idea is sits against the wall held in position what I'm going to do is that okay and then we're going to have a look at that in relation okay so that sits quite nicely there doesn't it kind of lifting as I'm hitting it. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, boy. Yeah. We've got no wire left on this thing. It's just a slight twist there. This is so annoying because what we've done there is look, we've just put this big cold shut into it. You see that there? Yeah. So all that work. I don't think we've just put that in, but we have put that in yeah, at I some. Know, it's there, yeah. yeah, it's just a shame that. I mean, I think it's because this isn't doing anything structural. It should be all right, but there you go. We've just done all that work. And then in theory, from a professional blacksmith's point of view, it's kind of like, mm, really, you know, should we put that out there? But look, that's beyond the scope of this film, but just goes to show you, you know, I mean, what, we, we managed to make that in like 40 minutes and then now it's taken us probably another hour on top of that to get it where we want it. But you know, in theory, there are processes involved in that. We've shaped it, you know, we've put hopefully what, kind of appears to be a fairly even a fairly even curve in it and of course again you know with a with a set of jigs for this that would be amazing and it would be a lot quicker and it would be a lot more repeatable but you know we're kind of trying to make a one-off crazy thing here so you need a break a break <laughs> i do mate i'm <coughs> kind of bored and sick of it now <laughs> Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> no, that was a noisy one. Okay. So what's now? Uh, oh, always pushing me. Always pushing me to make. <laughs> make. <laughs> Maker's got to make. That's five. So I think what we're, we're going to be able to draw those out to. I don't want to get this wrong and then end up having to, because we'll cut them all first. I think we're going to, let's go for four inch, eh? So bear with it. Now it'll flap about. Okay. 
six there. So what I'm just going to do is just put a little chamfer, just you know, round the edge. So just watch your watch your eyeball holes. Chamfered both ends just to make it a nicer taper. Let's get them in there. So I'm just going to eyeball the centre of our penny and mark it for drilling. And then what we'll do is when we've got the first hook measured, we'll clip it on there. And then we're looking for the spacing. So I think because this falls away from your eye around the corner, equal spacing isn't going to work because it's going to make this hook that goes last look as if it's further around because of that curve. So we can pull that back in. It's what I did with this one actually. So that, you know, these, these hooks are closer than that spacing there. You know, to do that spacing there would have put that hook right round here and it would have looked, it wouldn't have looked quite right. It's funny how things like that work out, isn't it? Or maybe funny's not the word. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're just going to taper it out, so it's circular, sorry, it's circular, oh, shit, that ain't going to work. Watching that point. Um, why I'm working on this side of the anvil is so I don't do this, which is essentially driving the hammer into the hardened steel face on the anvil. Ooh, ah, He doesn't know mm. have some technical things. Sir, so, new one. Well, funnily enough, we're already at 1200, so we've already in those two heats or whatever, we've already drawn it out two centimetres, so we're now at nearly five inch. I actually think that's enough. We don't want them too long or all those hooks are going to land too low. So now we're taking off those corners. Don't know if you can get in there. Just taking off that corner. Yeah? It doesn't need to be straight at this point. Okay, there's one. That's done, so we'll pop that there. That's done, is it? Yeah, well, not done in terms of all the way, but done in terms of just where I want it. So we're just over there.
Sweet Uncle Al. What's this thing? Uh, this thing? It's actually what they call, I think what they would call a steak anvil, so it's not meant to be in that hardy hole, hence the wobble on it, because it's got a tapered shank, but this is very light work, so I'm just going to do it on here. So we can look, so they're not quite the same, but we're getting something like, aren't we? And what I'm doing here is I'm just squaring it all up a bit. Time to get the first one right, and then we've got a pattern we can literally offer them up to each other. You happy with that one? Yeah, that one will do. So I'm just going to bob that down there somewhere where I can see it. So we've, uh, we've got our trace hooks made, uh, so we'll just give those a wire brush now. Safety, contact, contact, contact. <laughs> <laughs> so just eyeball the center because that's the kind of thing we're going for. Eyeball the center because that's the kind of thing we're going for. Have you got that? You've got it. Are you getting this? Yeah. Just eyeballing the center. Is that the kind of thing we're going for? <gasps> oh yeah, sweet guy. Brushy, brushy, brushy. Our first hook is going to be there, in the middle. Okay, very basically. Right. Oh, Smash this, honestly. I made the other one over, you know, two days. Yeah. So I kind of like, you know, you, you kind of think, right. When you I've, get sick of it. I've had enough break. today. I'm just going to walk away from it and I'm going to. Well, should we do that? Because I don't want you all angry. Well, no, it's all. Look, with, with the, the whole point was the hooks. That is about 80 mil. So 80 mil would be there. See, I kind of think the two together will look quite. <laughs> I bother. I mean, to be fair, it's no surprise. I'm trying to clamp onto a, f you know, the whole point is. I mean, uh, it looks good, man.
think it's because I forged it, and it, it works hardened. Work hardens the mild steel. Okay, so we've got our pieces of bullshit. We've got our strap of shit. <laughs> so we'll pop that there. You'll enjoy this. This works quite well. So what we do is we take one of those. And so I just want to mark about something like there, because this is just copper. Just adds that bit of color to the whole project. Okay, there we go. Okay, we seem to use a lot of them. I love that copper and steel thing. They're cut to size. Now actually this is the bit I kind of quite like. So, first things first, we need to get ourselves all ready. Take this up to red. That's enough. That's enough everyone. Pop that on there and beat the living shit out of it on the back. So it matches. Nice riveted in look. Okay. I might be coming back. I might be coming back right now, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Just in time. Make sure we get it the right way on. So we'll pop it here and smash that bad boy down. Okay. Oh gosh, I tell you what, you don't have to make me work, Mark. Make sure we get it the right way on. I'm I'm kind of peening over the uh, the rivet on the back, but you know, look, we could end up with a nice finish like that, both sides. But I actually think that peening over just kind of and that little this little bit of texturing kind of matches it in. It also takes away that sharp edge. And it's, that's just a shame, isn't it, that that sits top on top of that. Mm. Hmm. But then obviously it does narrow down, so. But there's a mistake to fix in the next one, isn't there? Say that. I don't think I'll ever do anything again. <laughs> yeah. Let's make Do you want one that way? <laughs> that didn't exist at the start of today. It didn't, did it? Now it does. Now it does. So how do you... Was that a ball leg? Well, it was a little bit, but um, in an ideal world, I think what we would have done is, for me today, we would have stopped after forming the band for want of a better expression. Um, the other thing I think I'd change about it is I would probably pop these rivets. Uh, what I mean by that is I'd take these rivets off and I'd just gently file that so it doesn't sit above the line. You see what I mean? I'll show you it there as yeah. well. You see where it just sits above the line. Yeah. So I think that would have been nicer if we'd have... Yeah, and so, don't do that. Well, the one on the other end does. It does, but then of course it would because of the way that the band 
expands and shrinks. Of course it would. You know, that's something that we... So long as it matches on... Sorry, dude. Uh, so long as it matches on either side, I don't think... Yeah. It... Shall, I, shall I drill those two holes for you and then we'll... You made this. I just come in like this and I just say to you, right, and we're going to be giving this away. The stinking towel I wiped myself on as we were making this. So all you ladies out there, get your hands on one of my stinking towels. Oh yeah, the wrapper bling. I think they detract from it. The only difference, and you might be able to see it a little bit better now, is that this one um, has got essentially, I don't know if you can see the finish on there, but the finish on that one is a matte lacquer, uh, a matte lacquer. Right. And I think it really adds to it actually, doesn't it? That dry finish. I also think that this one's made out of a heavier gauge steel than that one. I don't know how you'd work it. Would that one once be up there so things would hang through? Yeah. But I think, yeah, really, I think what we've just probably made there is something that will be going in the work. I think what we've probably made there is something that will be, do you see, they're not even missing a beat, you know what I mean? I'm like, bang, bang, bang. What line do you want? That one. Here it is. I'm better now. Um, so, essentially, these will probably end up in the workshop. Cool. Very good. You gonna sign oh, off then? Scrap heap. <laughs> Yeah, look, thanks for sticking with us. Um, I think half of this whole apathy towards being, doing things at the moment is partly due to the shoulder and, not that it's giving me any grief or anything, but you know, getting over that, that basically just sitting on my ass for what's about it. Oh yeah, is that the tiniest fear violin? I'm trying to make a poignant point. <laughs> Whinging. Yeah. All you've done is throw things and drop things. There's been a lot of drop seasons, isn't there? There always is, mate. There always is. At least we don't have to jump to bloody put them right so quickly because we've got a cement floor now, so it can't set on fire. But yeah, it's just frustrating, mate. You know what I mean? It's where, where how the workshop is at the moment. It's a oh. positive. Uh, and remember, stay safe, stay indoors, don't talk to anyone, and just watch Dirty Shed Creations. Bye now. <laughs>